making the tables is a bit of a tedious process, but it will help us with part five. It actually did a lot of the work for us that we're going to need for this next portion. There are other ways to do tables in Excel, but the way that I showed you in the last video is the way that you want to do it for this project. So I want to create both a frequency histogram and a relative frequency histogram, and I want to label them appropriately. So if I look back here to the table that I created, these frequency values are what I want to make a graph of. So what you want to do is you want to highlight the frequencies, but be careful. Only highlight the title frequency all the way down to the bottom row, but do not highlight that sum. If you highlight the sum, things will go bad for you. <laughs> Alright, so then I'm going to click Insert and you want to look for the histogram or column chart is what they will call it. So to look for the column chart menu and there it is, column charts. Now it gives me this lovely graph which is atrocious and needs some work. So that's what I'm going to do next is to work on that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make it so the bars are wider. So I'm going to right click on a bar. I'm going to format the data series and in Excel 2013, this right menu kind of shows up on the right side of my screen. And I want it to be on this little histogram bars, which is series options. And I want to look down here where it says gap width, and I want to turn that to zero. So I'm going to use my slider bar, or you can go in here and type it. I want to make it zero. And while you're in here, if you want, you can change what color everything is. You can say, I want things to be orange because I feel like it. I want there to be, um, click on border, that'll give you the border menu, and you can say I want my solid line to be this deep burnt color right there, and I want it to be, oh I don't know, 1.25 font. Right? You can fiddle with all of that stuff right in here. If I go click on the graph, I can see that it's all fussed with. Okay, so I kind of got JC colors maroon and yellow in there. All right, so now I want to add in a whole bunch of things. I want to add in titles. I want to fiddle around with my labels, etc. And also, these are not one, two, three, four, five. They are the first class, second class, third class, but I need some numbers that represent that a little bit better. All right, so let's think here. If I click on one of the axes, then over here it becomes the format axis option. Now if this was gone and you right click on the axis so that it's highlighted, then click format axis, it'll pop back up over here. And what we want is we want to have a label for this axis. We want it to have a title. right? So let's look here, text options. Nope, axis options. Oops, I forgot. It's not there at all. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. It's not in the access options. It's over here on the left. It's uh, add chart element. It's in the design tools. So let me just show you real quick. If I click off of the graph, you know, let's say I want to move it around or whatever, then it, it disappears. But if I click back on the graph, the design and format tabs show back up in my home menu. I want to add a chart element. The other way to do that is this little plus sign over here, chart elements. And I can say I want to add in, uh, let's see, access titles right there, and that should be good. Right? So I can click it there, or I can click over here on add chart element, and I can click access titles, and I can say give me a horizontal one, that's the bottom axis, and I can do it again, access title, give me a vertical one, click there. So you can either do it that or at this little plus menu over here. Okay, so I'm going to move this over, and I'm going to close this format shape thing, so I don't need to see that. I'm going to just move that. So I'm going to click on the white space in my graph. I'm just going to kind of shift it over so we have a cleaner view of it while, we're, while I'm messing around with this thing for you to be able to see, so it's not so confusing. Okay, so here's the graph. And honestly, you want to move it out over to the right anyway because you don't want it to have any part of... Um, what you're doing for later stuff. So I'm going to call this part 5 GDP graphs, I think is what it's called. Let me double check that. Yep, GDP graphs. Alright, so let me go back to Excel. Okay, so I've got my graph here, lovely, wonderful. 
and I'm going to make my menu disappear just so you guys can see more of my screen here. All right, so what I want to do is I want to title these. So this is the frequency. So I click on this vertical title and just start typing. Frequency, enter, and then it'll change it automatically. Now if you want to make that a bigger font, if that's really tiny, which it is, you can click on the home or you can right click on it, I bet. Yep, you can right click on it, click on font, and say, hey, I want this to be a 12 point font, and it'll make it 12 point font. I want it to be bold. I hit control B and it made it bold. So you can fuss around with the font for that. You can either do it by right clicking and clicking font or you can click on the home if you need to make the ribbon show back up and say, hey, I want to make this 14 enter. And then it did. It made a 14 point font. I'm going to unbold that. Now over here we have some problems. I need this access title to be matching the GDP for my data set. So I could call it, you know, GDP per capita. I want to call it what the data actually was. So I'm going to click in here and type GDP per capita. And then it would be helpful if I knew what units it was. So this was in U, um, 2000 US dollars. 2000 being the year. So if you want to say in year 2000 US dollars. Always helpful to know the unit and what we're talking about. Um, 2000 US dollars is, is a pretty common um, economic measure, so don't be surprised by that. You have to pick a year that you're basing your inf um, inference off of. So. I made it in year 2000 US dollars. I know that because it said so right here under the About tab. That's one of the reasons you kept it, because you're in fixed 2000 US dollars. Now, what's really terrible about this is the horizontal axis is all wrong. I need to make this axis equal to my values. Now, we have some options here, but either way, I'm going to right click. Oops. Let me see if I can find it. It's select data. It's not formatting the axis. I know that's kind of crazy, but you actually want to select the data right there. And then you might be able to do it, let me right click on the bars. Yep, select data right there. So either way, but what you want to get into is this, because you want to see this horizontal category axis labels. This is all wrong. So I'm going to click edit. And it's saying, hey, where are the labels at? And so let me move over here. Now we have to choose. Honestly, they're both okay. It's just kind of whatever you want to use. You can either highlight the classes. That's why you found them and leave them that way and say okay and okay. And you can see the graph, right? You can see how the axis became these big numbers. But that's really kind of cumbersome. It's not very pretty to look at. So if you don't like that, um, you can also make it equal to the midpoints. So I'd right click, select data edit for the horizontal axis labels and I would highlight all the midpoints. Be careful not to highlight the top or the bottom because those are just titles where it says the word midpoints. But you want the first number which for me was 500 all the way down to the last number which for me was 19,500 and say OK. And then click OK and then it made them the midpoints over here which that's also fine. So it's up to you. Um, you can fuss around with your labels if you like, but the diagonal feature is kind of nice. But if you right click Format Axis, this is where you can mess around with um, do I want my direction to be different? How do I want my tick marks to look? What am I my labels to be like? I want my labels next to the axis. I want them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can fuss around with that stuff if you want to, um, especially if you can't see enough you might so desire. So use either the midpoints or use the class labels, your choice. Either one is fine. And then we'll go up here and we'll type what this is. So this is um, part five, um, number one. This is a frequency histogram of GDP per capita in 1960 for me, you would put whatever year it was for you. If you like, you can make it bold, so it's nice and bold. All right, now you just got to do it all over again for the relative frequency, but luckily it follows the same pattern as the frequency. So let me go over here, 
I'm going to close this chart area thing down so I don't have to see it. Okay, so you highlight your relative frequency values. Start at your first row, go down to the bottom. Do not include the one. That's a big no-no. So go to the last row of data. Click insert, click column, click the column chart. I'm going to move it the heck out of here because I really don't want it where it is. I want it so that the instructor who's looking at this can nice see see the graphs nice and large, easy to find, not covering up other stuff. So I'm going to kind of shift them over by moving them around with my cursor. Then I'm going to click on the data, right click, format data series, lower my gap width to zero. I can fuss with my colors if desired by clicking on the little paint bucket and changing the color to, I don't know, green and changing my borderline to I don't know. Let's do black or gray. And then I'm going to up how wide it is. There it is. There we have it. Now I want to add in the, the titles. So you can do that either by clicking on the plus sign that appears over here, or you can do it by adding chart element. Either one. I'm going to do it by the plus sign. It's a little faster because I can just click one box and then they both appear and it's already highlighted in here, so I'm going to type relative frequency and then click off of it. And then I actually still like the same title, so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to highlight and press Control C and go down here and Control V, oopie, double click in here, Control V. And there we go, I have it. <laughs> so I just got out of having to type, that's all I did. So if you don't like that, you can just sit there and type it yourself. It's not a big deal. You can fuss with how big you want the size to be and all that stuff. And then I'm just going to title this. This is going to be part two. So this is part five, number two. I'm trying to model it after my other one. Part five, number two relative frequency histogram of GDP per capita in 1960. Now if you submitted it like this currently it would be incorrect and you'd lose points because of the one big thing that you haven't done which is the horizontal axis labels. They're the worst. So you right click on the table or excuse me, on the graph bars or on the axis and click select data. That's the one and you want to edit your horizontal axis labels. So let me see. Right here, horizontal axis labels currently shows 1, 2, 3, 4, which is bad. So I'm going to click Edit. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to choose, for this one, I'll choose the actual classes. That way you can see the difference. And say OK. And say OK. So now there they are. And the instructor who goes to look at this can clearly see everything nicely labeled and all that good stuff. You want to make it so that they can follow along, see your graphs, you've colored them how you like, and titled them how you like, etc. Now real quickly I wanted to show you what to do. These are really large numbers, that's why I stopped them at 0.99 so it wouldn't freak out on me with Excel. If you don't like the fact that it's on a diagonal, you can click on the axis and then under, under axis options, I think it's this one, size and properties, yeah there it is, alignment. And you can tell it to rotate let's say 270, and then it'll write it um, at 270 degrees, which means it's going vertically from the bottom to the top. So this first bar is 0 to 999. So you can leave it at a diagonal if you so desire, or you can make it vertical. You can also make it vertical going the other direction at 90 degrees. So that's another option. So use whichever option makes you happy. Me personally, I kind of like the horse or the diagonal, so I'm just going to leave it like that. You can always go click on the graphs and make them a little bit larger, make them a little bit easier for your instructor to find, right? That's always good. And make sure that, by the way, that you've labeled at the top, like I did, that this is part five.